Of all of the Pokemon types, Bug is the simplest to explain. But it does have an interesting history. For a time, it was a terrible type to be. So many common weaknesses and so few good moves. It was almost a worthless type back in Gen 1 and 2. But these days, it's just as good of a type as the rest of them, and that's thanks to repeated buffs gen after gen. But when it comes to explaining why the various Bug-type Pokemon are Bug-type, it's quite simple. They are all bugs. Well, that is except for a few of them. There are a few that get a little gray into whether or not they should be bug type or not. And I'll be saving those ones for the end. For now, let's explain what the bug type is all about and why each bug type Pokemon is what it is. Icky, germy, creepy, tiny, cute, lovable, pettable things. There are quite a large variety, especially since bug is the general term for many, many things. It includes insects, arachnids, some anthropods, and more. And while most are tiny, some are very large. Keep that away. Thankfully for me, I don't have to worry about the big ones here in Oregon, but in the tropics, there are billions of them of varying size. The total mass of all bugs easily outweighs everything else on land, so it makes sense that many bug-type Pokémon are extremely common. And speaking of the bug Pokémon, they are massive for bugs! This one's the size of a horse! Of course! A horse! Just think of the logistics there! Ah. All right, I'm calm. So let's categorize these Pokemon with similar ones and start with the OG bug Pokemon, Caterpie. Based on the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail in its caterpillar state, these spots on its body aren't actually its eyes. Well, maybe they are on Caterpie, Pokemon are weird, but if this Pokemon were accurate, the eyes would actually be tiny, tiny little specks right here. Cute. The eye marks are for scaring away predators, of course, because Caterpie are delicious treats to a Spiro. Metapod are just the boring chrysalis stage of the caterpillar when they wrap themselves up and sleep forever, and they then become a beautiful butterfly. In this case, Butterfree. Sort of a generic butterfly, but its wings most closely resemble that of the black-veined white butterfly. Other Pokémon that go through the same metamorphosis are Wurmple and Scatterbug. Scatterbug and its evolution Spupa are both sort of generic also. They seem to most closely resemble the larval forms of the carpet moth and clothes moths, the moths that eat fabric, and considering the fashion theme of 6th gen, that makes sense. Though, they evolve into Vivillian, a butterfly, not a moth. So that brings us back to the generic aspect, as moths and butterflies are hard to tell apart before their middle stage. And Vivillian is different depending on where you live. And as such, it somewhat symbolizes all of the minute changes that can happen over spread out generations of butterflies across the world. It's really cool how tiny changes in DNA over generations can do that. It's kind of like the butterfly effect. Literally. As for Wurmple, there are plenty of pink caterpillars, such as the pink sphinx. And then there's the slightly less pink but more horned elm or four-horned sphinx. Combining these two would get you Wurmple, who then evolves into either Silcoon or Cascoon, both cocoon stages of the metamorphosis. And then finally, either Beautyfly or Dustox. Now, there are no real caterpillars or worms that can turn into a butterfly or a moth, but they are close enough that it works for a Pokemon, I suppose. Beautyfly seems like a generic swallowtail butterfly, and Dustox is based on the Luna Moth. So let's talk about moths now. Larvesta and Volcarona are some of my favorite Pokemon, partially because I also happen to love moths. They are based on the Atlas Moth or the Cecropia Moth, as well as the saying, attracted like a moth to a flame. Clever. Venonat is named after the gnat, like noggin with the silent G, but it's a bit of a misconception when it comes to being based on one because it isn't. Gnats are very small blips that you normally can't see the details of because they are so tiny, so they just look like little fuzzy balls in the air. But this is a gnat up close, and this is a mite, what Venonat is actually based on, at least according to its name in other languages, as well as its poison typing and its behavior according to the Pokedex and basically everything besides the English name. It then evolves into Venomoth, which is a very generic moth. But because of its poison typing, it's likely based on moths from the Arctinae family. I'm probably mispronouncing that. As that family of moths are the poisonous moths. Though the coloration, especially of the shiny Venomoth, points to Morpho butterflies. Man, Game Freak sure likes to confuse moths and butterflies a lot. 
Surskit is easy, it's based on the Garaday or Water Strider or Jesus Bug. These guys go by a lot of names, but they are easily identified as they live right on the water's surface, skating around, not sinking in because of the way they spread out their body weight as to not break the surface tension of the water. And then, for whatever reason, Surskit, the pond skipper, evolves into Masquerade, the moth thing. Well, maybe? It's got these big wing things that look like huge eyes, which many moths do, but then it also has the head shape of a lanternfly and the flight pattern of a damselfly, so it's kind of all over the place. Pokemon are allowed to do that, but I wish I could pinpoint it. Burmy are based on bagworms, which are little worms that grab onto things from their surroundings and makes a little protective bag around itself, from leaves to rocks to trash. It just does whatever it can to survive. <laughs> the cute little hobo. Then it evolves into either Wormadam or Mothim, depending on its sex. Female bagworms never fully mature into their moth stage like the males do. The females stay at home all day and collect child support money. And these aren't even the only bagworm Pokemon, there's also Pineco and Foratress. One is a bagworm resembling a pinecone, and the other looks more like a clam, honestly. It even has cannons resembling the jets that some clams and mussels have, so should it really be bug type? Well, the Pokedex does list both of these as bagworm Pokemon, so I guess so. Then, other bug Pokemon that go through a similar metamorphosis, but not into butterflies or moths, are the lines of Weedle, Swadloon, and Grubbin. Grubbin is just that a grub, which is the larval stage of a beetle. Nothing much else to go on. But when it evolves into charge a bug, you know, what even is a charge a bug? It looks kind of like a wrapped up cocooned bug, but not quite. It's just so square. It's more of a battery than a bug. Hmm. Notably though, there is the Denki Mushi Caterpillar in Japan, whose sting is said to feel like an electric shock, and it is similar in color, so there's that. But then the final form is Vikavolt, which is based on either a Cyclomatus, or a Stag Beetle, or a weird mix of the two. And then there's Siwaddle and Swadloon. They are based on the caterpillar and chrysalis forms of the silver-spotted skipper butterfly, but then instead of evolving into yet another butterfly, they become a walking leaf bug good one. And then Weedle goes against the norm even more. It's a little worm that then becomes a cocoon mixed with the larval stage of a bee, a cocoona, and then into a bee drill. So at least the last two stages make sense, though bee drill isn't a bee, it's an Asian giant hornet. Pokemon that are bees, however, are Combi and Vespiquen. Combi is a honeybee that is also the honeycomb within beehives which is where they store their eggs and honey. And also, they are almost entirely male. The occasional females have this spot on their head, and that means that they are able to evolve into Vespiquen, the queen bee of the hive, as beehives are ruled over by a single queen. And then there's Cutie Fly and Rabombi. Both, both completely adorable. And both based on the Bombali Day Bee Fly. That was fun to say. Bombali Day Bee Fly. Another bug that flies is Yanma and Yanmega, its evolution, which looks like a military helicopter, and that's really cool. Yanma is a dragonfly, clearly, perhaps specifically the red-veined darter. And Yanmega are based on the Meganeura, a now-extinct dragonfly that were massive. Cicadas are also flying insects, and in Pokemon they are Ninkata, Ninjask, and Shedinja. Ninkata is the nymph stage of the Cicada, and when it evolves into both Ninjask and Shedinja, Ninjask is the fully grown Cicada, and Shedinja is the leftover husk that Cicadas are famous for leaving all over the darn place. Buzzswool is an Ultra Beast based on a very, very ripped mosquito those darn little bloodsuckers. Illumise and Volbeat are both Firefly Pokemon that love each other, as Fireflies are often depicted in romantic scenes in media, especially because the fire on these flies is used to signal each other and find a mate. Cute! Lediba and Lydian are both obviously based on ladybugs, not much more to go off with them. Scyther and Scizor are based on praying mantises and mantid flies, which are just mantises with larger wings. And Pinsir doesn't fly until it mega evolves, 
Pinsir is based on the stag beetle too, just like Vikavolt, but specifically, Pinsir seems to be the Lucanus, Mansulife Moratus, Hopi. And similar to stag beetles are rhinoceros beetles, which Heracross is based on, and when it mega evolves it becomes much more similar to a Hercules beetle. Another beetle is Carablast, which is a mix of the Scarab beetle, a Japanese rhinoceros beetle, and the Carabus bleptoids, bleptoids, which is famous for eating snails. And Escavalier is the same beetle inhabiting a stolen shell, as they do. In this case, it's the shell of a shelmet, a snail nautilus worm thing, which evolves into a selgor, a very fast slug snail bagworm thing. Love being specific. Good job, Game Freak. And speaking of hard shells, Durant is a very durable ant with an exoskeleton of steel. And an exoskeleton is tangentially a shell, kind of, so that was a bad transition. But moving on, Genesect also has an exoskeleton of steel. In fact, it's a man-made one, as Genesect is a science experiment by Team Plasma. They took some revived fossil Pokémon and made modifications to it, including the shell, the cannon on its back, and who knows what else. There are plenty of theories on what ancient Pokémon they took, but it may not even be a Pokémon we know about at all yet. But one thing is for sure. It is an insect from the Paleozoic era, which was about 300 million years ago when insects were massive. Cricketot and Cricketoon are based on crickets, clearly. Those loud buggers that keep you up at night and make delicious reptile treats. Venipede, Whirlipede, and Scolipede also all have exoskeletons. It's like they're bugs or something. The first two forms are based on the pill millipede. Millipedes that are very short for being millipedes, but are able to curl up into a small pill and roll around. The last evolution, Scolipede, is based on the Scolipendra genus of centipedes, which are very, very large. Not bigger than a horse, though, but still big nonetheless. Scorupi is also obvious. It's a little scorpion, which loses the bug type? What the heck, Game Freak? It goes from being poison bug to being poison dark? I mean, I get why it's dark and I get why it's poison. We covered Drapion in both the poison type and dark type sections. But to replace bug when it's clearly a bug? Hmm. Well, if they ever add three type Pokemon, we know what will happen here. Next category, Arachnids. Spinarak and Ariados are very, very obviously spiders. Specifically, Spinarak seems to resemble the Hawaiian Happy Face Spider, because it's greenish and has that happy face on its butt. And Ariados's coloring seems to resemble the Mimarachne Formicaria. Joltik is a little cute, fuzzy, jumping spider, but with elements from the tick as well. But instead of sucking blood, it sucks electricity from wires. Still a pain, but much more innocent. You can't give Lyme disease to a cable. At least not yet, the scientists are working on it. Those darn cables, they deserve it. Joltik then evolves into Galvantula, which is a large tarantula. Those big fuzzy spiders that weirdos keep as pets. Dewpiter and Araquanid are based on diving bell spiders. Spiders that live most of their lives underwater and use their webs to store air bubbles for them to breathe. And now we reach the final category, the somewhat controversial category of, are these bugs? Should these really be bug type? What's going on here? It's quite the long name, but it's worth it. First, let's get Pheromosa out of the way. This Ultra Beast has two origins that fans argue about all the time. Is it an American cockroach after molting and it never gets its shell back? Or is it a copepod, a tiny planktonic crustacean that looks like this? There are plenty of arguments for both that we won't get into, but it also begs the question, are crustaceans bugs? Because obviously, if Pheromosa is the American cockroach, then obviously it's a bug. But if it's a copepod, what then? And the same applies with Crustal and Dwebble as well. Both are hermit crabs. And there's also Parasect and Paris. Some say that they are cicadas without wings, but others point to their more crab-like appearance. Though, personally, I think they are just sort of generic insects. So, they get to be bugs. You guys get out of this not-so-sure category. I said get! But crustaceans, right? Are they bugs? Krabby and Kingler aren't bug type, neither are the other shrimp and lobsters. Crustaceans share many properties with bugs though, like the exoskeleton and the large number of legs. In fact, crustaceans are part of a larger group known as anthropods. And that group not only includes crustaceans, but also 
insects, and arachnids. So, the argument is clearly there to make crabs bugs, but you wouldn't pick up a lobster and say, you get this bug off of me, would you? Perhaps, in Crustal and Dwebble's case, it's because they aren't watery crustaceans like most are. Crabby and Kingler aren't bug type because they're water type instead. But you couldn't just give Crustal and Dwebble the water type like most crustaceans are because they're not watery. So, is bug just the next best thing? Why not make them just rock type? And if crustaceans are bugs, even in the exception of the Pokemon world, then shouldn't Crab Brawler be fighting bug instead of just fighting type? And then, what about the other Anthropod Pokemon? Anorith and Armaldo are a Trilobite and an Anomalocaris. And then Wimpod is a Trilobite mixed with an Isopod, a crustacean. Golisopod, then, is the giant Isopod, another crustacean related to shrimp and crabs. Not bugs! Again, you wouldn't hand someone a plate of cocktail shrimp and say, hey, have a platter of insects. You'd give them a split-second panic attack until they realized you were just messing with them. And then, there's Shuckle! You always ruin everything, Shuckle! Who the heck are you? You resemble a tortoise more than anything! The closest real-life thing to a Shuckle is an endolith. Freaking algae inside of a rock! Endoliths are colonies of bacteria or fungus or algae found in the pores between mineral grains of a rock, and they are often in long tubes or strings within, like Shuckle. So are we now saying that algae is a bug? Where does it end? Are you a bug? Am I a bug? Who cares? It's Pokemon! Are you perhaps a barnacle? A mollusk? What's up, Shuckle? Talk to me! <sighs> well, there is another aspect of Shuckle that points us to an actual bug. Shuckle is said to make delicious juice out of berries, and the scale insect is a parasite that also makes a sweet liquid to attract insects for food. And you can sort of see similarities in this freshly hatched species, but this one would imply that Shuckle is both microscopic and each of its limbs are a completely different creature. But then, of all of the scale insects, the one that most closely resembles Shuckle is the soft scale insect, which is yellow and is one whole being, but it's specific specifically the soft shell one. So, not at all Shuckle, who has the highest defense in the game. It's tied with Mega Steelix and Mega Agron. Look at these three. One of them is not like the other, and it's freaking mystery meat over here. So are you a bug? Are these bugs? Ah. I suppose they share enough qualities with bugs, granting them the type, I guess. They were given it for lack of a better type. Maybe the type shouldn't be called bug, it should be called exoskeleton or something. Carapace type, creepy crawlies type, hard type. No, not that one. Well, <clears throat> that's it for bug Pokemon. What do you think? Pretty obvious, right? Well, the next type will be more interesting then, I promise you. So until that next time, please never stop using your noggin and check out these other awesome videos right here. Thanks a million.